there's been some really nice sunny weather over the last few days here. Yesterday got up to 23 degrees Celsius and um, I went and read with a friend in a park, um, seemingly with half of Utrecht. But um, what I was reading was a um, short story collection by Neil Gaiman called Trigger Warning and the copy I'm reading another friend of mine gave to me when I went over to theirs to get my hair done. So, um, mainly because I'm not making money off these videos, uh, but also because I want to share this story, um, I'm gonna read one of the short stories, one of the ones that I really like, over this video. So, please enjoy The Thing About Cassandra by Neil Gaiman. So there's Scally and me wearing Starsky and Hutch wigs, complete with sideburns, at five o'clock in the morning by the side of a canal in Amsterdam. There had been ten of us that night, including Rob, the groom, last seen, handcuffed to a bed in the red light district, with shaving foam covering his nether regions, and his future brother-in-law giggling and patting the hooker holding the straight razor on the arse, which was the point. I looked at Scally and he looked at me and he said, maximum deniability, and I nodded, because there are some questions you don't want to be able to answer when a bride starts asking pointed questions about the stag weekend. So we slipped off for a drink, leaving eight men in Starsky and Hutch wigs, one of whom was mostly naked, attached to a bed by fluffy pig handcuffs, and seemed to be starting to think this ad that this adventure wasn't such a good idea after all, behind us, in a room that smelled of disinfectant and cheap incense. And we went and sat by a canal and drank cans of Danish lager and talked about the old days. Scally, whose real name is Jeremy Porter in these days, people call him Jeremy, but he had been Scally when we were eleven and the groom-to-be, Rob Cunningham, had been at school with me. We had drifted out of touch, more or less, had found each other the lazy way you do these days, through Friends Reunited and Facebook and such, and now Scally and I were together for the first time since we were 19. The Starsky and Hutch wigs, which had been Scally's idea, made us look like we were playing brothers in some made-for-TV movie. Scally, the short, stocky brother with a thick mustache, me, the tall one, Given that I've made a significant portion, part of my income since leaving school modeling, I'd add the tall, good-looking one, but nobody looks good in a Starsky and Hutch wig complete with sideburns. Also, the wig itched. We sat by the canal, and when the logger had all gone, we kept talking, and we watched the sun come up. Last time I saw Scally, he was 19 and filled with big plans. He had just joined the RAF as a cadet. He was going to five pains and do double duty using the flights to smuggle drugs and so get incredibly rich while helping his country. It was the kind of mad idea he used to have all the way through school. Usually the whole thing would fall apart. Sometimes he'd get the rest of us into trouble on the way. Now, 12 years later, his six months in the RAF ended early because of an unspecified problem with his ankle. He was a senior executive in a firm that manufactured double glazed windows he told me, with, since the divorce, a smaller house that he felt that he deserved and only a golden retriever for company. He was sleeping with a woman in the double glazing firm, but had no expectations of her leaving her boyfriend for him. Seemed to find it easier that way. Of course, I wake up crying sometimes since the divorce. Well, you do, he said at one point. I could not imagine him crying, and anyway, he said it with a huge, scally grin. I told him all about me. Still modeling, helping out in a friend's antique shop to keep busy, more and more painting. I was lucky. People bought my paintings. Every year I would have a small gallery show at the Little Gallery in Chelsea, and while initially the only people to buy anything had been people I knew, photographers, old girlfriends, and the like, these days I have actual collectors. We talked about the days that only Scally seemed to remember, when he and Rob and I had been a team of three, invaluable, unbreakable. We talked about teenage heartbreak, about Caroline Minton, who was now Caroline Keene and married to a vicar, about the first time we brazened our way into an 18 film, although neither of us could remember what the film actually was. Then Scally said, I heard from Cassandra the other day. Cassandra? Your old girlfriend, Cassandra, remember? N no. The one from Regit. You had her name written on all your books. I must have looked particularly dense or drunk or sleepy because he said, You met her on a ski hauling day. Oh, for heaven's sake, your first shag. Cassandra. Oh, I said, remembering, remembering everything. Cassandra. And I did remember. 
Yeah, says Callie. She dropped me a line on Facebook. She's running a community theater in East London. You should talk to her. Really? Well, I think, well, I mean, reading between the lines of her message, she may still have a thing for you. She asked after you. I wondered how drunk he was, how drunk I was, staring at the canal in the early light. I said something. I forget what. Then I asked whether Scally remembered where our hotel was, because I had forgotten. And he said he had forgotten too, and that Rob had all the hotel details, and really we should go and find him and rescue him from the clutches of the nice hooker with the handcuffs and the shaving kit, which we realized would be easier if we knew how to get back to where we'd left him, and looking for some clue to where we had left Rob, I found a card with the hotel's address on it in my back pocket. So we headed back there, and the last thing I did before I walked away from the canal on that whole strange evening was to pull the itchy Starsky and Hutch wig off my head and throw it into the canal. It floated. Scally said, There was a deposit on that, you know. If you didn't want to wear it, I'd have carried it. Carried it. Then he said, You should drop Cassandra a line. I shook my head. I wondered who he had been talking to online, who he had confused for her, knowing definitely it wasn't Cassandra. The thing about Cassandra is this. I'd made her up. Okay, so I've decided that um, that's long enough. I think that's about a quarter of the story. So if you are interested, go look it up and read it and tell me what you think. I really like it. And I'm super glad that I'm now <laughs> into Neil Gaiman, which well, it has been a long time in the making. Um, so yeah, I always knew that he was cool, but now I know why he's cool. That was the sound of my towel rack falling. That's cool. Great. Okay, bye. <laughs> you plan. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I did not see that coming. I thought it was April Fool's tomorrow. Yeah, it is. But I, I today was the day you were gone. That's